Bill Harris Dallas Bay Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Bill Harris. <laughs> Today is quite an important day in the lives of Phil and Alice. They are about to sign a contract with a new sponsor. Right now, they're in the office of Mr. Phillips of the RCA Victor Company, discussing terms. And I know, Mr. Harris, that you people will be very happy working for RCA. Well, I'm sure we will. I don't know of a finer sponsor or a better product. And I assure you, sir, that from now on, Alice and I will trade in no other drugstore but an RCA. Well, that was last year. This is RCA. Oh, oh, of course, yes, RCA. And a finer outfit never existed. Splendid work you people did during the war. Why, it's a known fact that England would have been invaded if it hadn't have been for the brave men of the RCA. <laughs> that is RAF. For the last time, our company is the Radio Corporation of America. <clears throat> Now, let's get back to discussing the contract. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, look, uh, about the money, uh, Mr. Phillips, uh, my salary is 5000 a week. Shall uh, we settle for that, or do you want to uh, bargain a little? <laughs> let's bargain. I'll tell you what. You come down a little, and um, I'll come down a little. <laughs> You make an offer, and I'll make an offer. Oh, that's dandy. Now, um, I'm worth five thousand, but I'm I'm willing to take a little less. So, I'll I'll cut it in half, twenty five hundred. Well, if you're nice enough to cut it in half, I'll do the same thing. (laughs) I'll give you twelve fifty. You expect me to work for that kind of dough? I'm a big man. I don't. Down, (laughs) Wonga. Mr. Phillips will accept your offer. Ah, good. I'll have the contracts drawn up and send them over for you to sign tomorrow. Oh, by the way, when you get the contract, there'll be one additional clause that we haven't discussed, but uh, it won't affect you. What clause? The morals clause. (laughs) In this case, known as the no-remley clause. Hereafter referred to as the We Don't Want No Part of Remley Debtor Alive Amendment. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, you mean this this contract says that Remley will be out of the show? But why? Because I'm not a well man. <laughs> and I can't take a chance with him. Well, you know what happened to the last two sponsors who hired Remley? No, what? Their visiting hours are between three and five. <laughs> Well, they were just super sensitive. They don't know the secret of getting along with Remley. He's been with me constantly for 18 years, and he doesn't bother me at all. 18 years? How can you stand having him around you all the time? I take shots. <laughs> Look, Mr. Phillips, we can't sign a contract that, that doesn't include Frankie. I'm sorry. We want you very much, but we can't have Remley. You have until tomorrow morning to think it over. All right, Mr. Phillips. We'll go home and discuss it and let you know. Oh, Alice, I don't know what to do. I can't take a job without Frankie. Oh, I know how you feel, Phil, but you haven't earned a penny in four months. And people are starting to talk. (laughs) You know there's a rumor going around that you can't get a job? Don't be silly. Who'd start a rumor like that? Good morning, Philip. And how is my unemployed (laughs) (laughs) brother-in-law? Oh, so you're the one, huh, Willie? Well, it might interest you to know that a guy offered me a job today. Well, for goodness sakes, take it before the sucker comes to his senses tomorrow. (laughs) You know, Philip, the neighbors are starting to talk. They think you're destitute and your children are suffering. 
What do you mean, suffering? The way you talk, you'd think my kids were starving or something. Hello, Daddy. Hi, Dad. Oh, hello, girls. I just... Wait a minute. What are you kids dressed up like that for? Phyllis, why are you wearing those rags? It makes it easier for me to sell my apples. <laughs> <laughs> what apples? The ones I'm peddling outside the Brown Derby. <laughs> well, what are you doing that for? I'm trying to help you out, Daddy. Uncle Willie said you'd probably never get another job again. Oh, no. And out in front of the Brown Derby. What'll I say to all of my friends? Baby Alice, don't tell me that you're selling apples, too. Oh, no, Daddy. Well, thank goodness. I have a hot dog stand in front of NBC. <laughs> This is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to me. My poor little baby selling apples and hot dogs on street corners. Baby Alice, you're not going back to that hot dog stand. But, Daddy, it's a good business. I started at 9 o'clock this morning and I took in $28 already. I don't care how much you took... $28? If she started at 6 tomorrow... <laughs> And then got that breakfast trade She might wind Phil. up with, I'm sorry, honey I'm sorry I'm just <laughs> Things are in such a state I'm just Look, girls You kids don't have to work I've got a job I'm signing the contract tomorrow You mean you're gonna take it, Phil? Of course I'm gonna take it I'm not gonna let my kids work for me I'm running this family So you people listen to me I don't want to sound Like I'm preaching a sermon but I've heard people say The early bird catches the worm And there's a lot of good logic in that old cliche There's certain obligations you just can't shirk You've got to put that heat on to make the kettle perk And if you want it to be a good day You've got to do a good day's work you got to dig, 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 dig for your dinner Nothing's what you get for free You got to dig, 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 dig for your dinner Never was a money tree And furthermore, my friends, I must repeat Nobody's living down on Easy Street And if you want to owe for groceries You're gonna get an awful lot of no -series. You got to dig, 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 dig for a dollar Taint as simple as you think You can't purloin a sirloin or the Butcher will put you in the clink You just can't be a lazy bird You've got to get off of your twig So you can afford your room and your board And it's nice to have the price of a cig You've got to pay the fiddler man If you want to do a jig You got to be as busy as a bee To be a Mr. P.I.G. And if you want some dig, dig, dignity You got to dig, dig, dig Dig for your dinner, dig, 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 dig. You just can't be that lazy bird. You've got to get off of the twig so you can afford your room and your board. And it's nice to have the price of a cig. You've got to pay, old fiddler man, if you want to do a jig. You've got to be as busy as a bee to be a Mr. B.I.G. And if you want some dig, dig, dignity, you've got to dig, dig, dig. Dig for your dinner, dig, 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 right? Oh, honey, how am I going to break the news to Frankie? I'll never be able to look in his little bloodshot eyes. <laughs> oh, Phil, why worry about Frankie? You haven't seen him all summer. He hasn't been near you since there's no money coming in. I know, honey, but there must... Uh-oh, there's the bell. I'll get it. It's still a tough thing to have to tell a guy. Hiya, Curly. Frankie! <laughs> hey, it's good to see you, kid. Never mind that. You got my first week's check made out yet? <laughs> Checks, money, checks Look, Frankie, I've got a tough decision to make And it's enough to drive me to drink You need a chauffeur? <laughs> Frankie, please I'm familiar with the road Look, Remley I could drive it blind You often do <laughs> Look, 
look, this is no time for jokes. I got a sponsor problem. Curly, you ain't got no problem. That's what I came to see you about. I've been working on it all summer, and I got five sponsors lined up for you. You got five sponsors lined up? Sure. Every one of them is a fine, old, established firm. Yeah? Who are they? Well, one is Joe's Pool Room and Babysitting Service. <laughs> a shrewd merger. Then there's the Santa Anita Winter Book and Hot Wire Service. <laughs> They're dying to get you. Look, Clyde. Of course, the third one sounds best to me. It's a new big food outfit. They package imported delicacies. Wow. That sounds better. <laughs> uh, what kind of stuff do they have? Their biggest item is frozen camel food. <laughs> Frozen camel food. And that's just one of their items. They also handle canned whale blubber. <laughs> and they have an exclusive on marinated moose meat. <laughs> oh. I imagine there's a big demand for that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, not yet, but we'll create it. We'll circulate a rumor that the stuff is scarce and people will start hoarding it. <laughs> oh, Rumi, I don't think any of them will be a big seller. Why not? Well, uh, most housewives put that stuff up themselves. <laughs> I know my mother used to have a pantry full of marinated moose meat. <laughs> Well, maybe your mother did, but I don't think... Shut you... up! <laughs> Remley already got a sponsor. The only thing is... Well, look. They're willing to sign Alice and me, but... They don't want you. They don't want me? Sorry, Frankie. Are you going to take it without me? I have to, Frankie. I have a family. I got to think of them. Why? <laughs> well, I... I wish you wouldn't ask me such tough questions. <laughs> Frankie, look, if you don't want me to, I won't take the job. Just say the word. No. I don't want to stand in your way. You and Alice take it and go on to greater heights. Oh, I can't do it, Remley. What'll happen to you? How'll you get along? I'll just have to exist by chiseling a dime here, a yeah. nickel there. <laughs> bumming my meals wherever I can. When I want to smoke, I'll just pick a cigarette butt out of the gutter. Oh. Well, as long as you don't have to change your way of living, okay. <laughs> Right, I'll sign with RCA in the morning. No, Curly, before you do, I got two sponsors left. One of them's a big manufacturer, and he's willing to pay you and Alice five thousand dollars a week each. Five thousand each? That's right. He has a big plant downtown, and he wants me to bring you and Alice down to see him. Well, gee whiz, if I had to five thousand, huh? Each. Well, if it means a job for you, I guess it won't do any harm to talk to him. Okay, I'll get Alice. We'll go down and see your man, huh? <laughs> Hey, here's the address my friend gave me. Just follow me. Beautiful building, ain't it? But why do we have to go through the cellar? <laughs> well, that's what he told me to do. You know how these eccentric millionaires are. <laughs> yeah. Shall I ring the bell? No, no, don't touch the bell. Guy told me to knock. Excuse me. Frankie, what is this Woody Woodpecker routine? <laughs> I don't know. That's what he told me to do. Who's up there? Me, Frank Remley. I'm the guy you met at the bar last night. Oh, yeah, of course. Just a minute, I'll open the door for you as soon as I slip the phone. Go 
Door's open, Curly. Come on in. Oh, let's wait till he lowers the drawbridge. <laughs> Did you bring the meat for the sharks? <laughs> Don't stand out there yapping. Come on inside. You got all those bolts on the door. Well, that's just a precaution. In my business, you gotta be careful of prowlers. Afraid of burglars, huh? No, cops. Cops! I've heard of Dallas, <laughs> let's get out of here, will you? Come on. Don't get excited. This is a legitimate business. Of course. Well, Mr. Grogan, we came to see about the radio show you're gonna sponsor. This is Phil Harris and Alice Fay. What do you think of them? Well, I don't know. The babe looks all right, but the guy looks like a stool pigeon. <laughs> but I'll take a chance. You two go on the air for my product, and I will pay you five thousand a week each. Well, I'll make it ten thousand. That's twenty thousand a week. That's a lot of money. I never heard of you. How do I know you can afford to pay us twenty thousand? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I got a big factory. I got a product there's a demand for. Why, for years I've been making nothing but money. <laughs> what do you manufacture? Money. <laughs> hey, that sounds great to me, Curly. I can hear the program now. The Counterfeit Hour, starring Phil Harris. <laughs> Folks, have you tried our new product, the $3 bill? It comes in five attractive colors. You know? <laughs> we ain't going on no air plug and no hot money. I don't want you to plug it, stupid. All you gotta do is put on your show from a different city each week and no advertising. Well, if you don't want no advertising, why are you going to pay us $20,000 a week? I need somebody to pass the stuff, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with you actors, you ain't got no business heads. <laughs> Mr. Grogan, don't you realize what you're doing is against the law? What would your mother say if she knew you were printing money? I don't know. I'll ask her. Hey, Mom, get off the press and come here a minute. Oh, no. Let's get out of here. Come on, sir. Let's go home. Frankie, you ought to be ashamed of yourself taking us to a man like Grogan. So I made one little mistake. But don't you worry, I got one more sponsor left He's very legitimate and he's coming over here at 3 o'clock Forget your sponsor, we're going on for RCA and that's final But Alice... In fact, I have my song ready for our first show Do you want to hear it? No Nobody <laughs> asked you I love the guy Though he grieves me and he leaves me high and dry He breaks dates and I'm left alone Then I say that he's on his own But when he calls I break my neck to get the phone Cause I love the guy I love the lad So in love with him she's moved Though his lies and alibis just drive me mad we go out and he doesn't dress I get angry but I'll confess He's mine and I don't really care if he's a mess Cause I love the guy I love the dope I adore him, although for him there's no hope Other men may have better looks Make more money and read more books But only he could eat the things that this girl cooked So I love the guy I love that boy When he kisses, then this myth is filled with joy Famous men may admire me Millionaires may desire me But I belong to him and he belongs to me Yes, I love the child. Oh, Alice, 
look, I, I've been thinking it over, and you know, I owe it to Frankie to talk to this guy who wants to sponsor now, us. Now, please, Phil, don't do it. Don't even Well, it might it a... be a big deal, in it, and we'd miss... Oh, oh, there's the phone. I'll get it. Excuse me. I'll go with you, Curly. That might be my sponsor. <laughs> Phil, if it is, tell him not to bother coming over. Oh, I hope he isn't talked into anything on account of Frankie. Hi, Miss Faye. Bring the groceries. <laughs> Oh, hello, Julius. Are you the loner is that curly headed ball weevil still with you? <laughs> Julius, I don't want you to talk that way about Mr. Harris. Why not? Because he's my husband. I refuse to acknowledge the union. <laughs> you was roped into this thing. That's beside the point. Oh, I mean. <laughs> I- I'm all upset about Mr. Remley. He's bringing over one of his broken-down sponsors at 3 o'clock, and, well, I'm afraid Mr. Harris might sign with him, and I can't let that happen Alice, to Alice, Alice, come here quick. I got great news for you. I'll be right there. Excuse me, Julia. Sure. Oh, that poor little girl. <laughs> she ain't got no one to turn to but me. <laughs> and it's my job to see that sponsor don't sign Mr. Harris. Let's see now. Yeah. All I gotta do is sully his reputation and make him look like a no-good rat. It's a simple assignment. <laughs> if the sponsor thought I was Harris's juvenile delinquent son... <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I set up the plot, I'll be back at 3 o'clock. This ought to take care of everything. <laughs> I've got great news for you. The most wonderful thing just happened, Alice. That was Mr. Phillips that just called. He reconsidered, and RCA is going to sign us with Frankie. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, sure. (laughs) Hey, Phillips said that he'd be here right sharp at 3 o'clock. We won't be able to see him. That's when my sponsor's coming over. (laughs) Tell your sponsor to drop dead. We're signing with RCA at 3 o'clock. Yeah. Gee, it was nice of you to change your mind and decide to hire Frankie, Mr. Phillips. What made you do it? I like to live dangerously. (laughs) I hope I don't have trouble with him. Don't you worry about Remley, Mr. Phillips. He promised he'd keep his big fat mouth closed and his red nose out of your business. (laughs) Didn't you, Franklin? No. (laughs) Quiet. Now look, just give me the contract, Mr. Phillips, and I'll sign it. Ha! There you are, and spelt correct. (laughs) Now you sign, Mr. Phillips. Ah, gladly. Uh, But before I do, I want you to know we feel very fortunate in obtaining the services of you and Mrs. Harris. Yeah, yeah. Our company has to be very careful about the type of person who represents our product. Uh Uh-huh, I stand And you people certainly exemplify the typical happily married couple. Uh, Yeah, yeah, we're perfect. Get your name down. (laughs) Now, come on, here's the pen. Just sign the... Quick. Julius, let go of my arm. Who are you calling daddy? You, Poppin, you better come fast. Your steel is burling over. <laughs> <laughs> what still? The one you made me build for you out of my erector set. <laughs> oh, Julius, what are you talking about? Mother, when did you get out of Tehachapi? <laughs> Harris was in Tehachapi. It wasn't her fault. Pop framed her. <laughs> he framed her? He had to. She threatened to tell the cops how he made pickpockets out of his two little sisters. <laughs> pickpockets? All they did was peddle hot dogs and apples. Mr. Harris, I think you have a little explaining to do. Look, my kids ain't pickpockets. Frankie, tell him my girls ain't pickpockets. They never heisted nothing from me. <laughs> Of course, I don't let myself fall asleep when they're around. Frankie, will you please? I had a bell put on my wallet. Now, cut that out. (laughs) Gosh, Mr. Phillips, will you listen to me? This Julius, this kid ain't my son. Oh, Daddy, how could you? Are you really his son? Can't you tell? Look at us side by side. Can't you see how much we look alike? No, I hadn't noticed... Say, there is a remarkable resemblance. <laughs> same sloping forehead, same close set eyes, same receding Wait a minute, chin. Mr. Phillips, just a minute. 
You can't come in here and tell me that I look like that little mongoose. I'm liable to please, take you and please, twist your Please, control old... yourself. Control yourself. Don't kill this sponsor, too. Who? <laughs> if you knock this one off, you'll get the chair. If I looked like you, I deserved the chair. <laughs> you, you little traitor, I don't know what you're trying to do, but I'm going to break every bone in your body. Well, not... I've heard enough. Harris, I'm sorry, but I can't afford to have a man with your violent temper in our radio show. Good day. I better go with you. But look, Mr. Phillips, I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was saying. I apologize. I... Well, there goes our sponsor. Yeah, thanks to that, Julius. We're out of a job. Hey, that must be Mr. Phillips coming back. Come in. Hello, hello, hello there. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Howdy, do there. My name's Milligan. Hey, this is the sponsor I've been expecting. Hi, Frankie. Ah, this must be the cute, cute trick here you've been telling me about. That's right. Just call me Curly. I'm talking to the dame. <laughs> hey, Blondie, you're just what I'm looking for Now, if you and your straight man will sign here, I'll pay you $1,500 a week $1,500? Mm. Hey, we'll be glad to, we were just getting... Hey, wait a minute What's your product? What do I have to sell? Hot furs or sawed-off shotguns? Ah, don't be crude You'll be selling milk chocolate Milk chocolate? Mm. Hey, that's a wonderful product Right Okay, give me the pen and I'll sign for Alice and me Phil, I, I don't think we ought to rush into this. Now, you it... won't regret this, Miss Faye. Your first show is Monday night, and you're going to get top billing. Oh, that sounds wonderful. It is. It is wonderful. Now, can't you just see the billboards all, all, all over town? A <laughs> <laughs> uh, Burbank Burlesque presents Boo Boo Faye. <laughs> Boo-boo? The queen of the runway. Burlesque, you told me we were selling milk chocolate. You are. <laughs> That's fair. After Boo-Boo does her specialty, you walk up and down the aisles yelling, get your sweet California milk chocolate. A pretty girl is like a melody. Now stop it. Stop it, I tell you, we ain't doing no burlesque. Family, one of these days I'm going to kill you. <laughs> This is Phil again. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you nice kids out there for listening to our first program. And Alice and I and our whole gang feel happy to be back starting this new season, and we sincerely hope that you'll be with us each and every Sunday at the same time. And by the way, this coming week is a really big week on NBC. Bob Hope returns to his new season this Tuesday. And on Wednesday, Groucho Marx brings his show... You Bet Your Life to NBC. And on Friday, The Life of Riley returns starring William Bendix as Riley. Watch for them all. Good night, and thanks again for listening. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, only freedom and truth can inspire the subjugated peoples of Europe with hope and determination. Recognizing this, the crusade for freedom has been endorsed by the White House and the State Department. Its purpose to show the world just what America stands for and to bring support to the private radio station known as Radio Free Europe. To join the crusade, it's necessary only to sign the Pledge of Freedom in your hometown. Let your name become a symbol of freedom. Help fight lies by giving to the Crusade for Freedom. This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Dick Lane, Sheldon Leonard, and Joseph Kern. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. And remember, three times mean good times on... Stay tuned for Groucho Comes Aboard on NBC.